Jean-Pierre Melville, dès votre premier film, Le silence de la mer, vous avez travaillé en marge des normes classiques de l'industrie cinématographique. Cela veut dire qu'autrement, vous n'auriez pas pu faire ce dont vous rêviez Bien entendu, le problème pour les débutants a toujours été le même. D'abord, en dehors de ces dernières années, de ces trois ou quatre dernières années, il n'était pas question qu'un débutant euh, commence à tourner avec euh, des vedettes. Sans vedette, il est impossible de financer un film. Aucun distributeur, aucun producteur ne veut s'intéresser à un film tourné par un débutant sans vedette. J'étais donc obligé d'imaginer une production indépendante. The French maverick of a director, Jean-Pierre Merville, was an individualistic genre master. Famous for his films like Bob de la Fleur, Les Delos, and Les Samouraïs, which stood out as elegant explorations of the underworld, style, duplicity, and professionalism. One of his most well-viewed pieces was his late 1970s heist movie, Le Cercle Rouge, viewed as his masterpiece in combination of 20 or so years as a filmmaker. An idol of Herman Melville, writer of Moby Dick, who he had named himself after, when described this was one of his last films, he directed writer Michael Sargo put it that this was where Melville finally landed his white whale. A primary interest to me in the movie is one seeming representation of Le Cercle Rouge, simply translated into the Red Circle. There have been views of it as the mark of a bullet wound, the only image of it shown with main character Corée. I think that one of the best representations of it is the movie's original poster. Below the gregarious images of the actors is shown a simple Sorbassian image of three silhouettes surrounded by a red circle with another silhouette looking from outside. The three men inside, presumed to be criminals Corre, Vagel, and Jason, with police commissioner Matei, the one looking in the trapped three in the silent circle. How the movie deals with the code, subtle drives of the criminal underworld is most interesting, as it shows these men as almost separate to the rest, another kind of creature in a cycle chasing each other. Most explicitly shown with the cross-cutting between Corre and Vogel after Corre regifts a rose, this a sign of gratitude, of loyalty. After discussion on the heist, it seems Corre's life has changed after being in prison for five years. His former employer shown earlier to be sleeping with Corre's girlfriend, whilst Corre never sees for himself his naked lover in the next room, over the tension presented with the differing information the audience knows compared to what Corre knows. finally climaxing with Corre's sudden control of the situation, pointing the blunt muzzle of a gun at his friend as he presenting the black, emotionless knowledge. Using as an impersonal weapon a gun to threaten an old friend, and leaving pictures he kept over his time of his girlfriend. However doing so with considerably less malice, never breaking eye contact, he tosses the pictures to his companion. He's not angry with the betrayal of his girlfriend, but then says his employer, showing a more emotional connection was with him, not his lover. Thus, when Corre is regifting a rose to Vigel, given to him as a woman, he's again showing where his emotions lie. When given the rose, half his face in shadow, the woman gifting it is only to see his more well-mannered side of him, instead of his more meticulous interests. This image of passion, a rose always silently passed when given to Vigel, is instead of Corre's appreciation for loyalty, that so far as Corre seems to be lacking then followed by a sequence of fast cross-cutting between Corre and Vigel, a solicitation of their connection, whilst Melville using it, its commerce association, with joining of a romantic couple, to show that their trust in each other, despite the shadowy cold faces, is similar. Primarily, in some ways, shown through editing, one of the more drawn-out examples being during the editing comparison of Maté and Jason's life at home. Maté, a very confident policeman in charge of catching these three criminals, has a very comfortable life. His quiet evening routine, full of his quiet enjoyment, him feeding his three cats and drawing a bath. 
These calm, precise movements, having the effect of showing the slow, satisfying mundane of his life, were not chasing criminals. He's not interestingly thinking detective, just a quiet small man. As compared with the nightmarish perversion of Jasor's life, at the beginning, before recruited for the heist, the former police officer sits feverishly drunk, hallucinating slithery, scaly creatures. Instead of the brightly lit apartment, he's a dark, cavernous house, and instead of the furry creatures and coming mate, Jason is haunted by more disturbing animals. Instead of the brightly lit apartment, he's a dark, cavernous house, and instead of the furry creatures and coming mate, Jason is haunted by more disturbing animals. I think the true meaning of the Red Circle is the circle cops and robbers going after each other. When Carré leaves prison, a policeman mentions a jewel store in Paris, almost egging him on to commit a crime, and others like him to continue to chase him. The plan of Mate to edge on Carré to further incriminate himself. I think shown when doing this as an outsider coming into the frame. Him never thinking of himself as part of the cycle he's spinning. The one character not part of the circle being Chasson, played by the late Yves Moton, a then famous Italian and French actor and singer, with us all here conjuring up those of Frank Sinatra in The Man with the Golden Arm, or Dean Martin and Rio Bravo, who, like the latter, is shown to have dropped out as shown as a drunk, painfully rescued in a transformation of a role, morphing from a cop to a criminal, with only his regarding humanity when back. This almost adding an element of fate to these characters, destined to chase each other or die. The interesting of gangsters, director Melville has developed the culminating of this paradoxical image of men, trapped in a spiral, always chasing and going after each other as they work for their mission in life. Almost a victim of their actions, they're unable to do relying on each other for work. They're trapped in a circle, a spiral, a circus. They're in Le Cercle Rouge. Hi, this is Luke. If you liked that video, please like and subscribe, and click the bell icon for notifications about new videos.